Hi, my name is Dana Arnett, co-host of Wicked Marketing, along with my partner, Carlos Sapene. You can find more information about us and our business on LinkedIn. Or if you have any questions, email us at info at wickedbionic.com. Subscribe to Wicked Marketing on Apple Podcasts and write an awesome review for us. We're also on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Google Play. Thanks for listening. This is Dana. And this is Carlos. And this is Wicked Marketing. Oh, that was the end of Will's... Wait. <laughs> Isn't that like a 1970s start? That's Will Smith's... It sounds um, like... like- Atari. Atari. Or Atari. <laughs> some, it does sound some, like Atari. Like, really dated video game. That was that actually was Will Smith, uh, a post that he did on TikTok, which is what we're going to talk about today, which is a social media platform. Yeah. So um, for those of you that have not heard about TikTok or T-I-K-T-O-K. have... T-I-K-T-O-K. T-I-K-T-O-K. Um, it is an app. It is a social network. And it is a place where you should at least have it downloaded onto your phone if you're doing any sort of marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk a little bit about why these well, things are important. Yeah, or the history. Right? Do you want to talk a little bit about the history of TikTok? Let, let's talk first about why okay. it's important, and then we can go into the history. So the, the reason why, as a brand, product, or service, you should be uh, tracking uh, innovation, right? So um, there's there's a term called early adoption, right? Or early adopters uh, that are the first people that jump into trying things. That's you. Uh, that's me. Every um, single new thing. Hey, Dana, have you? Hey, yeah. Dana, have you? I'm like, I don't want to. Tell me if it sticks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the question, right? Will it stick or will it not stick? Um, and a lot of brands and products and services wait to figure out if something is gonna stick before they even start looking at it. Mm -hmm. So when I go back to thinking about when Twitter started, right? um, I was at E when Twitter started. I think there were four people working at Twitter (laughs) when (laughs) when we started engaging with them. And we were able to um, sort of get ahead of everybody Mm -hmm. else in the entertainment space. Uh, We were one of the biggest brands on Twitter. We brought in the Style Network and also grew that to a million followers Mm -hmm. uh, with our Style Quick Tips. And it was because we engaged with it early on. A lot of the entertainment companies were, uh, by the time they went to jump on it, their legal teams were aware of it and they prevented them from no, really? getting on it because they were afraid of what you could say and that it was out there already <laughs> right. and how you could get in trouble. So when the the advantages of just at least being aware of things that are coming out, um, which TikTok has been around for a few years now. And Isn't we'll it funny how long that. it takes for something to be popular? It takes a while. I mean, you know, we're on a podcast. I launched some of the first podcasts mm-hmm. uh, when, when I launched uh, the Chelsea Handler podcast with E. Um, there was one person working at Apple, Pete Alcorn, uh, that was in charge of um, podcasts. Oh, there. no kidding. Uh, and I believe he's still with Apple. And so, but come to realize that 10 years later or whatever, now podcasts are huge and everybody's trying to do them. Uh, back then, it was like, it mm. is so a leap of faith when it's something's at the beginning, right? Yeah, it's a leap of faith. Especially when you have to continually do it. So the importance of staying abreast of these things is that at the very beginning um, or towards the beginning is when these so- social networks uh, are in what is called the discovery phase, mm-hmm. right? So the discovery phase is the phase when people are starting to come on board right. to the social network. They're starting to try it. Mm -hmm. Right. And they're starting to figure out who they want to follow. Right. Because just because someone is great on Vine or was great on Vine, it doesn't mean that they were going to be great on Instagram. Different. It doesn't mean that if they're great on Instagram, that they were going to be great on Musical.ly, which then uh, became TikTok. So. So when these things are coming up, it gives you a chance to get on there. 
Mm-hmm. See what's trending, what's doing well, and see where your brand would fit in it. Because if you ride the wave of discovery, that's where it becomes easier to become an influencer within a social network. Well, and it's not so darn crowded. Exactly. Like when you're saying about the other entertainment brands jumping into Twitter, and I know you guys were at the beginning with E, you know, it's like, it's, and then the space is this, and then your competition is this, and mm-hmm. it's just, it's hard to get seen. Right? Yeah, and that's the thing, right? So like if you, it's, it's like people that say now that they want to launch a YouTube channel. You know how hard it is at this point to make a YouTube channel really resonate if you don't know people that have YouTube channels that can help you push your channel. Right. Um, it's it's extremely hard because everybody's on it, right. right? So that's the advantage of adapting or at least looking into how you can resonate. Um, and it also gives you a chance to fail without that many people seeing it. Uh, People that are jumping on, or brands that are jumping on later in the lifespan of a social network uh, tend to fail horribly because there's a lot of people that can see it. Well, and, and you know, I, I mean, f- you know, as you're talking, I'm thinking philosophically, it's that thing of like, you know, and I, as one that has played it cautious a lot of my career, the, there's the cautiousness, okay, let's see what everybody else does first, because I don't want to step in. And then there's the people that do the leap of faith, and they just jump in. And I think that's the entrepreneur, right? That's yeah. the entrepreneurial mind. Well, I'm just going to jump in, and I'm going to see what this is all about. And then there's people that like, and certainly different brands that aren't sure or clear the path they don't want to mess anything up but you know it's just a different mentality well, and then there's also the cautious that hears about it and hears about it and hears about it and hears about it still doesn't take a leap and never downloads it to right. their phone right. to even look at where these things are going and they miss out on the organic opportunity meaning you don't have to pay for it except for creating the content obviously um that that brings all these eyeballs to you. So let's talk a little bit about TikTok. Um, TikTok is a brand from uh, China, Mm -hmm. right? So people are aware of that. There's been all over the news, the fact that the brand is from China. But the functionality of the app is actually based on um, an app that came before it uh, called Musical.ly. Uh, Musical.ly, I I remember that. Yeah, so Musical.ly uh, sold to TikTok, I believe it was in 2017, mm. or to the brand that owns uh, TikTok. Um, for it was initially reported for a billion dollars. It ended up being more like 800 million dollars. And the, yeah, what's the difference? Two hundred thousand yeah. yeah. dollars. What's the difference? Yeah. What's the difference? <laughs> um, the the. Two hundred million. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the reason why Musically was was sold to TikTok, and or one of the reasons why Musically was sold to TikTok, is because a lot of the early adopters, and this happens quite a bit in the digital space, a lot of the early adopters are younger. Mm -hmm. Um, the kids, right? So they're the ones that when you talk about millennials and Gen Z, uh, they're the ones that grew up with discovery sort of built into their bloodstream. And they're searching the app store for something cool. They're always searching because they have massive ADD, (laughs) (laughs) but they're always searching for the next thing, the next fun thing. They're not looking to innovate. They're looking for the next thrill. They're just curious, yeah. Curious, curious curious and, and want to know what's out there, what's fun, what can entertain them Mm -hmm. in that digital space. It's sort of like the Gen Xers looking for what's the next show on Netflix, right? Right. What's the next thing? Uh, Because we now get tired of shows and we move on. And I'm actually a Xennial, so I'm half and half (laughs) Gen (laughs) X and Millennial in this case. Hey, Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm low end a Boomer, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so Musical.ly started with uh, the ability for you to record yourself lip syncing and then doing fun things uh, as you lip synced mm-hmm. to songs, right? So uh, it sort of really capitalized on the creativity that people had. Um, and it was something that 
that hadn't been explored in that way since the days of Vine. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of us that were around for Vine, um, what was great about Vine was the creativity that mm -hmm. people had in these short videos of how they, you know, came up with crazy things to do in that short period of right, time short, on video. Short, short. It was like Super short. Six seconds or six seconds, yeah. I think is what it was. Um and and you got to see like it was sort of like the challenge of seeing fun. like what can you do in that amount in that, of time, right? right? Um, so Musical.ly was all about you lip syncing, mm -hmm. yes, but what were you doing while you right. were, were you dancing syncing, with your dog? Right? Were you, yeah, what were you yeah. doing? Um, and so the challenge that they ran into early on is that the uh, early adopters were mostly um, very young, mm -hmm. very, very young. And the challenge with having people that are very young, even though I think there, uh, you had to be 13 to jump on it, uh, is that at the end of the day, all these platforms, all these apps, all these social networks, uh, yes, they're great and they're all about connecting people and they're all about engaging and they're all about creating content, but every business is about making money, right? Mm -hmm. And when you look at these platforms, the way that they make a big chunk of their money is through advertising, right? Right, And for us, being an agency and knowing how advertising works, uh, we know that there's different restrictions around what you can do in advertising mm -hmm. for people that are under 18, for people that are 13. Um, there is actually uh, 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 laws and guidelines, you know, for COPA. Sure. Um, is it comes into play it sounds like hipaa which is the, <laughs> the health one uh copa is the one about as for children um so a lot of brands that advertise if they're not in the children's space try to stay away from places that are actively young, young, copa young. yep right um because there's there's lots of gray areas there's a it's lot messy. of liability yeah. there you don't want to you know you don't want your your hundred thousand dollars that you're spending on advertising to cost you a you know ten million dollars in fees Legal because fees, you yeah. violated copa and and something happened um so they had a challenge attracting uh people that were older right, right? Adult, and yeah. and you know, like we were talking about before, there's a life cycle to adoption and engagement. Right. And, you know, like podcasts took 10, 15 years, however long it was. I don't want to date it. Yeah. Um, the same thing happened with Musical.ly, right? So by the time TikTok came around and, and uh, or the brand, I, I can't say the name of the brand that owns them. It's like Seng who something. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I, I can't say it. Um, when, by the time they came around to looking at Musical.ly, at purchasing it, they, uh, um, Musical.ly was still challenged in, right. in generating this revenue and, and being able to uh, engage people uh, in, in within the monetizable mm -hmm. spectrum, the mm -hmm. highly monetizable spectrum, let's call it that, of people. Um, so in comes... TikTok, which was a brand that they already had, but they were not using it for, right, for what social, TikTok yeah. is nowadays. And um, they adapted Musical.ly uh, or replaced Musical.ly with TikTok. Now, TikTok is named TikTok because it is based on the sound of a clock, right? Mm -hmm. So the tick tock, tick tock, uh -huh. right? Um, and it's supposed to stand for that length of time of tick tock right mm -hmm. like like your um the the shortening of amount of time mm -hmm. that they give you to create to create this your, content yes. and be creative and use music and engage people right. in a very reduced amount of time right so that's why it's called tick tock so one of the things that i love about TikTok overall is not only that it's making people get really creative, right? Like Will Smith 
on TikTok. Well, and what, what Will did just in that particular one that came up just fresh from today is he, so he really was just kind of walking into a room with music, but then he had headlines. He had put text over the image with the music to tell you what was going on, whatever message he wanted to relay or fun thing he wanted to say. So that's what that was about. So we, that you can still say something in yeah. essence. Yeah, and um, the Jonas Brothers. Yeah, big. Also, super fun TikTokers. Creative. Um, they're very creative. Obviously, there's other. There's there's many other early adopters right. that have huge followings now on TikTok that are not celebrities right. because they started early on, um, and now they're TikTok celebrities. Right. right. So. Right. And you get um, to have fun. What's kind of fun is, you know, you don't have to have to have your, if you're kind of a buttoned up brand, you can still have fun and do something that's fun. And that's, I think, great. You know, people get to know your personality a little bit more and, you know, who you are in the space. It's kind of fun. Yeah. And and what I love about TikTok or one of the things, I guess, as a marketing agency mm -hmm. that, that we love about TikTok is that their advertising strategy Right. So the way that they're encouraging brands to engage with them around advertising is about authenticity. So obviously they're a business and they want to make money. So they will allow you to put ads on TikTok that are um, sort of standard type video mm -hmm. ads. Right. right. So uh, but what they're doing is they're telling brands already listen, guys, if you actually want TikTok to work for you, mm -hmm. right, if you actually want your brand to resonate on TikTok, um, you have to think about advertising differently. You have to not just rely on your typical advertising formula, right, and just reuse the same ads that you're running on TV or running on Instagram. Right, right, you, different. It, it just does not resonate. And TikTok is sort of like, a tinder mm -hmm. it's literally a tinder of music right <laughs> so like you can swipe that thing up yeah, yeah, so yeah. fast that is basically like a left swipe on tinder yeah you're yeah, literally yeah. saying i don't care about this brand so right. it, right uh which is kind of what you can do on instagram stories too uh so some of the things that are working on uh TikTok in particular are things like challenges Mm -hmm. Right. So coming up with creative ways to engage the TikTok community in challenges that relate to your brand. Right. right. So um, uh, challenging people to use their creativity to interpret your brand and then they can win something or they gain something. So fun. Um, so, yeah, I would encourage any brand that's out there that wants to take advantage of the fact that TikTok is still very much in discovery, wants to take advantage of the fact that the audience of TikTok is growing, mm -hmm. right? And it's gonna continue to grow. Um, I'm sure Facebook is already feeling threatened by and annoyed. it. So <laughs> we'll see. They'll probably be coming up with their version of, of TikTok course. to integrate into Facebook if they can't buy it. Um, but I would encourage the brands to uh, go in there and not look at the ads, but look at the challenges. Yeah, yeah, look yeah. at how other brands are getting creative and how they're engaging people um, and are getting more flexible uh, on delivering their brand message by leveraging the authenticity mm -hmm. uh, that is brought by the people that are on TikTok already that have experienced TikTok, that know how to relate to people on TikTok, that know how to be effective on TikTok. Um, and, and, and like we were saying before, right, that hesitation. Right, that scared to take that, that leap of faith and to go do something or be something different in a, or in a different medium. And you know, it really is, my, my recommendation is download the app, lay down on the couch and binge TikTok. Mm -hmm. Just binge, just slide, 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 watch, 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 and just start to get a feeling and see where, if it sparks your creativity for where your brand can insert themselves. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Be flexible if you can about it because if you can't come up with a way for your brand to be on TikTok, mm -hmm. it doesn't help your brand, product, or service to just, you know, stick your head in the sand like it's not happening. Mm -hmm. It is happening. Uh, think about using your budget to partner 
with people that have success on TikTok, that have figured out how to interact with people on TikTok and engage with people on TikTok and uh, let them help you connect with people on TikTok. For sure. So that's TikTok. Super fun. It is It is really fun and amusing to watch. So yeah, take and a look. Incredibly so and incredibly creative. And incredibly creative. It definitely sparks those juices. So thank you for listening today. Don't forget to subscribe to and share Wicked Marketing on Apple Podcasts and write an awesome review for us. We are also on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Google Play. See you next time.